Eric, one of the other things that you've done is sort of remarkable, and I sort of want to understand beyond the showmanship of it why you did this, is you made or designed a bottle out of plastics from ocean waste. Yeah, right? One. That's the bottle? Okay. Is that what this is right here, by the way? Is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I can explain the bag so of it, 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 broken plastic. <laughs> that we're having a ticker tape parade in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. These are the challenges Adam gives me. <laughs> <laughs> Taking bottles made out of ocean plastic, which naturally look like this, and I'll let him explain it, and then figuring out how do you tell this story to a mainstream audience that have, that have major impact on it. So uh, these are some of the fun challenges we get to figure out. You want to talk about, why don't you, this is something that you've very much been a, a passion project of yeah. engineering, so why don't you uh, explain how we got to here. Yeah, there are three big impacts. Our, our methods impacts, environmentally speaking, come through three big things, chemicals, plastic, and fuel, in roughly equal degrees. Um, on the plastics piece of that, um, our focus has been to make bottles out of the plastic that's already on the planet. So if you do all of the analyses and the, and the life cycle analysis and stuff like that, what you learn is that just using recycled plastic at 100% is, the, is sort of your best bet. And Which is what all what, these are. If you oh, yeah. see there's a, a slight gray tint, everything uh, we make of these. Yeah, there's 100% post-consumer here. And we were, the, we were the first to do that. And um, are, those, are those PET? That... This is PET, yeah. like water bottle yeah. plastic. And uh, that, that lowers the carbon footprint of this bottle by about 85%. And we also like kind of big, kind of silly challenges. And so um, we've been concerned about the ocean plastic problem, as probably many of you in this room have been for a long time and had the same reaction that everybody has to that problem, which is like, oh my gosh, like, it's so overwhelming, what do you do about it? And so we just decided, we started asking ourselves this question of, if we're already making stuff out of 100% post-consumer material, like, what's the ultimate post-consumer material? And, and we turned to this problem and we said, hey, let's see if we can gather some of this stuff and make bottles out of it. And uh, it was a really simple idea in the beginning. It's been very hard to sort of get to that point, but we you know, like literally used our airline miles to fly our employees on the weekends uh, to go collect. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's stuff. I wanted to know. Much a, uh, yeah. How do you source this? How, how do you source this? Yeah, uh, and is it, I mean is, it, is there actual? Is, was this a, a a stunt to show that you can do this, or is this an actual business model or product that you're going to be? Well, we're going to we're going to launch a line of products in 2012 made out, out of this plastic, which is. Um, uh, plastic made from stuff we've gathered out of the oceans. And, and literally, how do you source it? Where does it, do you fly so, out to the Pacific Gyre? Or <laughs> so um, the, the first way we sourced it is to go get it ourselves. And that is um, we um, went to beaches in Hawaii, which are in the north, uh, southern edge of the gyre. It's really tough to get our employees to go to Hawaii, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Like, <laughs> on our miles. Um, and, and collected this plastic ourselves off of beach points. We also got some directly out of the water um, in the gyre. That gave us the initial quantity to launch this product, develop these bottles, do all the R&D. We're now shifting that to like a crowdsourced model where we're putting incentives in place for there's a whole worldwide network of people doing gyre cleanups. There's not just one gyre in the Pacific, there's actually five. Um, there's all sorts of non-open ocean plastic cleanup that's going on. And we're providing incentives to get that plastic to us um, so that we can you know, make these bottles on sort of an ongoing basis. Now, a lot of this is an experiment. Um, right now, the, this, these are the most expensive bottles we manufacture. Yeah. But yeah. that's always the case when you're doing something really pioneering. And what we're really trying to do is prove whether, whether for plastic bottles for cleaning products or for some other totally different application that we have nothing to do with, that there might be a way to try to use this material that's just in the wrong place um, for, a, for a better purpose, and more importantly, for us is to point to the solution to the plastic pollution problem, which is what we're already doing, using the plastic that's already on the planet. I, you know, last little commentary, I, I'm very concerned about what's happening right now with some of the bioplastic uh, space where people are making new virgin plastic out of bio sources. That's, that's a nice step in the right direction, but it only makes the plastic pollution problem worse. Right. We've got to find better ways of taking back the plastic we already have on the planet and reusing it. Right.